this is definitely my um, part of my method into getting into a character is to love my character because <laughs> you know especially if you're playing someone who's like not nice you have to really figure out who they are why they are who they are and love them through it <laughs> I think that's that would that would be my method is loving them through all their bad decisions <laughs> Filmmaker Magazine presents Back to One with Peter Rinaldi. Wumi Masaku is an actor. She sat down with me in cyberspace to talk about the work. Do you have a typical way that you like to begin your preparation process for a new role? I guess the typical road to each character for me is going to be the script. It's going to be reading it thoroughly, seeing what people say about my character, see what I say about my character, and then filling the gaps in between. Because I feel like that's a sh that's that's really I don't know, like how I experience life. I'll say I'm one thing, someone else will say I'm something else, and then the truth is somewhere in between, right? So that would be that would be like literally the most practical thing I do is what do what do I say about myself? What do others say about me? So and yeah, and figuring out where she's missing what she's putting out and and what she thinks she's putting out. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah, and then it really is about um imagination like I try and figure out um I try to like envisage their home where they grew up how they grew up just trying to make those feelings and memories and and the environment kind of tangible I really struggle with characters that I really don't I can't imagine where they grew up like mm. I can't imagine their home. I can't imagine what their bedroom looks like, you know, and my relationship to everything in the room. My um, old drama teacher, Bill Gaskell, he used to say to me whenever I was struggling with a character, like look at the room you're in and figure out your relationship to everything, the cushions, mm. the, the blankets, the co coffee table, where did you get them? How did, yeah. how did they come to be in your space? And just figuring out those kind of stories, um, you know, is it someone who likes to sew their own clothes, crochet? Did it someone who, you know, I don't know, just someone who likes to like go thrift store shopping or go buy things, you know, brand new and I don't know, just all that kind of stuff. Yes, and yeah. you know, and you, you're you're making me think of something. I'm I'm reading a book now on the early days of uh, of the of the the method, the quote unquote method, you know. Uh, uh, and the and the Moscow uh, theater and and all this and and th there was some exercises they were doing about like trying to spark imagination like like what you're talking about here and one of the actors was 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 very um, impatient about this you know because coming from an old style of acting just like not uh, thinking it makes any sense to do that but just the idea of connecting with the cushion where you bought it like if it if you explain that to somebody and they'd be like, why does that matter? But there's some kind of process, right? About, about making that story up. It turns into what? Something else in your mind, right? And then it, it's igniting something. It's like, I am who I am right now, sat here in my room because of everything that has happened to yes. me before. Yeah. Yes. Everyone who I've you know encountered, every scar every laugh every um every relationship you know blooming and broken like i am a product of all of that right now so i want to figure out who that person is before we meet them because then from you know with good writing from that moment on they're changed again you know so you want to and everything that they've experienced before will 
will um, impact the de- their decision making for the for the things that happen in the future in the yes, show. Yes. Um, yeah. So I just think it's. I mean, a person who likes things brand new in comparison to a person who likes to make things with their hands. It's very, it's just two very different people. Yes. I mean, there's, you know, they might have the same objective, but how they get around, get to their objectives, two very different ways. Yes. Um, so just, I just want to, I just want to paint that kind of um, picture for myself because, I mean, I think the script will tell you like who they are like so because of how they do what they do mm-hmm. so i just kind of go back and figure out why they do what they do yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> going forward you know yeah yeah see and that brings up a thing that i always worry about like what if you're filling in because you want it you want it to make sense to what they're about to do in the story you know, like, and what if you fill in for them stuff that is enticing and juicy and wonderful to wrap your arms around, but it's not helping in terms of what is uh, what is leading them to do what they do in the story? Do you, I mean, do you have to think enough, like that much about it? I mean, you can you know, can make up that they play a musical instrument or whatever, but I'm not going to make up like a whole. Um, you know, like a trauma or something that yeah. will make it not like something that would be um, uh, f- would cre- create friction between what's what I've created and what the character is going to do. So I I want it to be simpatico for sure. Um, and I think you know there is a there is a you know in 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 theatre they always say like at the beginning of the show, the play knows more about the character than you do. And then by the end of the show, you, sh- you should know the character more than anyone else. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's, it's a, you know, I think in, with TV, you know, it, the more you live with the character, you might be able to, you know, say to, you know, give your ideas to a writer yeah. or the director. But I, I do think like, within a finite piece, um, the script is going to tell you exactly who that person is. And you will know who that person is by living that person every single day mm. without having, t- you know, you can say, I know who this person is because of the, you know, the story, just because of the decisions that they make. So everything that you come up with before, like should inform that but it shouldn't contradict it. So it's been a few years since you've been on stage, right? How how long has it been? 2014 was the last play I did. I think that was probably a highlight of my whole career doing that play. As, As an actor, there was just a moment in it. Like I remember saying to my director, Robert Icke, I said, I feel like I'm just doing the same thing over and I am doing the same thing over and over again. <laughs> but I'm like, I feel like even my pauses feel exactly the same. Even my breath mm. intake feels exactly the same. And I I want to feel a little different. And I don't know how to, the show is working, but I don't know how to like make it, you know, to, to, to keep loving it (laughs) and he gave he he used to do this thing where he would give the um the cast a different just a different different like little nugget in their mind so he 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 gave me this nugget of like okay so you and mike's character let's just imagine you guys were in a relationship at one point you're not in it now Mm. but you know you want him back and um you think he might be doing something with Annabelle's character. <laughs> I don't know. Mm. And it was, this was Mr. Burns, the play with Mr. Burns. And that night <laughs> was literally the most electric night wow. ever wow. of my whole career. <laughs> I was like, whoa. Like, and I really just, like I could just read so much more. Everything just felt so different and fresh. And, and I just, 
honestly, it was such a highlight. I was like, I have to remember this day. I think now I can't really remember, but it was like June 14th, <laughs> 2020, 2014. Wow. And then the next day, I was so excited and I was going to kind of think the same things. But the audience mm. hated the show. <laughs> mm. And that was it. It was like a high to an absolute low. The audience hated the show that night. And wow. I have never felt such an extreme, which was still, again, quite extraordinary and like quite yeah. um, made me love it even more because I was like, wow, you can have the best night of your whole <laughs> life on stage. And yeah. then the next day, yeah, you can have the worst night where they were, I mean, J June 14th, I was backstage like sobbing, watching Jenna Russell singing the last song. And I was just like sobbing, like, whoa, this play is so powerful. And then the next day, I could hear the audience kind of chuckling in that same song. And I was oh. like, what the hell? Wow. <laughs> How did this happen? Wow. Isn't yeah. it incredible? <laughs> what What was it that you, that you think it was about what he gave you and that you took like what 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 did that do i guess i stopped taking the show and what i thought the show was for granted mm. i just i felt some i felt new things i you know i who i thought the character was i just i just i took her for granted mm -hmm. um i i lost moments of like her humanity. I had found moments of her humanity with some uh, other parts, but then I took it for granted. And then just finding this little crush that she had, she may have had on this one person this time around, you know, yeah. just changed it, just changed the dynamic. Just get, it just made me feel alive. You had a, um... And tell me if I'm wrong about this. You talk about it as being a real kind of a game-changing moment or, or maybe it was just a pivotal moment. You had a two-hour audition once, mm. right? Can you talk about that? There, th this is when you're kind of transitioning into doing um, uh, television work or on-camera work. Yeah. I, why can't I remember her name right now? That Susan, my heart. Susan, Susan, I can't remember her last name. Anyway, yeah, so I was used to doing theater, drama school, like, um, and I had gotten little, like a tiny little part in like, you know, uh, what would you like kind of line, a, a waiter, um, here's your coffee. And an, another kind of three line part. And I was auditioning for something that was, um, you know, like a series regular and Susan, <laughs> she was just, she brought me in and she had seen me all through drama school. Um, that's the, that was the thing that, you know, I feel like I don't know how anyone does it without drama school is, is casting directors coming in to see you mm -hmm. regularly all through the year, you know? Yeah. Um, so yeah, so she knew what I was capable of on stage, but you know, on camera, it just wasn't translating. And she was just like, you know, she just made me do it over and over and over and over again, giving me notes and, you know, my projection was way too much. My, my physicality was way too much um, for camera. And, you know, we sat there and we, we really try to like kind of embody the character, not present them, mm. not just trying to relax into it and not push, not push, push. And it's crazy because on stage there is this thing where I'll, I remember this is, this is like the advice I, some of the, this is one piece of advice that has always stayed with me since drama school. It was our movement teacher, Frances. She said, um, you know, you have to imagine you've got like um, an elastic band between you and the audience. Every time you reach, every time you strain, every time you're like, please, 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 can you see how I'm feeling? Every time you lean so hard to the audience, 
it slacks. Yeah, that's so good. <laughs> They're not, you know what I mean? It just yeah. slacks. The trying, the pushing is just, so I had to basically with Susan that day was trying to find that elastic band between me and the camera. Mm. I hadn't really figured out that like alchemy yet. So I was doing that push, mm. which just wasn't, you know, it wasn't attractive. It wasn't electric. Yeah. No one's just interested in watching you push. They're interested in watching you be. Yeah. You know, you don't want to show off to the audience. You don't want to tell them how to feel. Yes. You know, you just want to be and, and inhabit and 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 and, and breathe. Yeah. <laughs> so that was um, that was basically the two hour workshop was figuring out that elastic band, how that works on camera, that that connected to the center of the earth, center of gravity. How does that work on camera? Yes. And then another lesson I learned, which I, you know, I really just, again, so clear and has stuck with me was with um, Brenda Blevin on Vera. Um, my character comes into her room and tells her something and I I noticed like she turned away from me but she didn't turn completely away from the camera <laughs> and I was like oh that she's turning away from the audience but the audience can still see and feel what she's what she's feeling yeah and i just thought oh that's part of the elastic elastic band it's like you're not turning away so it snaps away from them like right. and it snaps and it the, the connection's broken you're still letting them in to them you're still letting them into it into yes. who she is and what she's feeling um whereas i woman on set that day was or holly my character she had turned away from me mm -hmm. so and i just thought oh yeah that's there's the there's the alchemy yes. <laughs> you know that's and, the that's the difference and you were also saying that you you actually started working as a pa on on some of these things just to be around uh to see how things were were, were done and like and and one of the things you said you 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 had a hard time with in the beginning was eye lines. Oh yeah. I still, <laughs> I mean, that's something that I'm sure a lot of people can relate to. I mean, because <laughs> <laughs> it's still, it's still a problem, you know, just like with directors, uh, the, they still have a problem with the 180, you know, degree rule with the camera. I mean, there's people that still are working total professionals that don't understand it. You know, I'm sure there's actors that don't understand the eye line thing or that, or that are just, so frustrated by it i kind of have it down to like maybe up to three or four people but like a dinner table scene like i oh, don't yeah. get it i just the way i think about it is like the audience is a is a is a member of the scene yeah so their position can't change yeah. so you've got someone on your right you got someone on your left you know and you know so i i <sighs> that's my closest way of kind of think i think i i think i get it yeah <laughs> but even on loki i was like i feel like my li eye line changed to the tesseract and they're like no women were good <laughs> and i was like are you sure because i feel like like yeah no women you're good we know what we're doing <laughs> well that but that and that's a good point there maybe it's not your problem you know, maybe it is something that oh, somebody yeah. should set should be able to say, just like a continuity person would be able to say. It's almost the same thing as continuity oh, yeah. in a way, right? Well, it is. It is. It's it's a, it's a script supervisor who is in charge of continuity is in charge of your eyeline. There you too. go. Not yeah. in charge, but like yeah. they will flag up if the eyeline has um, switched. See, I didn't know that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, yeah, that's yeah. interesting. That makes sense. That makes sense. Yeah. So, so that's yeah. another thing that you can take off yourself. You don't need to be burdened. Oh, <laughs> you know that Bye. is kind of the thing that I do. I, I I learned as I went. I was I remember on Moses Jones. I that was the, that was actually the the job I went in on as a PA on my days off. Um, that was my first like uh, female lead and. 
um, that was pretty much directly because of my audition with Susan mm. that I was able to go into that audition and not you know lose the elasticity yeah. <laughs> or snap the or snap the band um my only real job is to show up on time and and know my lines and know my character and that's really it yeah. and on Moses Jones I really felt very uncomfortable everyone like carrying things and my carrying parts of my costume and this and that and I was like I've got it I've got it I've got it and then I lost a necklace that we only had one of and I was like in between lunch and you know the turnaround and I was like and they were like yeah you know and I was like oh this is it it wasn't my job I was trying to make it my job Yes. And now I've messed up. Yeah. <laughs> or like I kept resetting my tea and I was making a cup. It, well, actually, it was the same scene. I kept having to make a, um, a cup of tea or in the same room anyway. No, it was the same scene. And I was making a cup of tea and I kept throwing the tea down the drain in between um, takes. And I had no idea at that you know, that that drain wasn't a real drain and that it was just a set. <laughs> you know, yeah. after a while, the the, oh, the, the the cupboards underneath the sink bust open and just tea all over the set. And I had no idea. And it's like, you know, now I just leave everything. Like I leave my props. I'll be like, yes. hey, props, I'm, I'm dropping it here. Um, hey, costume, I'm taking my shoes off. Hey, you know, I just yes. leave everything because you have no idea. Like, don't assume that the set, as good as it looks, right. as much as it looks like it works, don't assume that it's real. <laughs> I had uh, Sophie Derisu on for for his house. That's when I first started wanting you on. So it's been almost two years. That you know, he he seemed to really like working with you. I don't know if it's mutual. <laughs> it was. It was mutual. Um, we kind of got thrown into each other really quickly um, because it was like Netflix hadn't bought it. It was it was a low budget film. But thankfully we had rehearsal like that just mm -hmm. never happens mm -hmm. i think we had did we have two weeks of rehearsals wow. maybe two weeks of rehearsals and so we just took the opportunity because it was so rare to have rehearsal to just really get to know each other and you know i definitely feel like oh this is definitely my um part of my method into getting into an act into a character is to love my character because <laughs> yeah. you know especially if you're playing someone who's like not nice you have to really figure out who they are why they are who they are and love them through it <laughs> I think that's that would that would be my method is loving them through all their bad decisions <laughs> but yeah so then it was also like in that having the time I was able to love him as a brother and love his character and just love his character. Um, even through all of his terrible, <laughs> terrible decisions. And, and that was, that was those two weeks was, was kind of falling in love with Ball and Rial and, and, and getting this friendship this, you know, f this friendship of trust and respect with Chopin. And it was great. It was great. And then Remy, <laughs> I mean, he's just, first of all, he's the sweetest. Second of all, he's written such an amazing script. And he's so humble and just sweet. And so there was just this, this trust that we kind of, mm. we just, we, we went in like, okay, we're doing this. We're doing this together. Like it's your first feature. Let's, I'm, I'm behind you 100%. 
I'm behind shop hair 100 and vice versa like everyone was just kind of behind each other and and that was that was it <laughs> that was how we were able to do it like and because the love was real yeah, you know yeah. and the respect was real when you see the benefit of rehearsal like that so palpably doesn't that really like shock you that that we haven't figured that out that that maybe a little bit of that would go a long way on every <laughs> production i mean but by now like wouldn't we figure that out yet i know it's so interesting because i don't know i don't know why it's not factored in and we had it on lovecraft country we did we had i had dance guitar and then like and I feel like you can tell, like me yes. and Journey had a lot of time together figuring out what it was to be each other's sister, yes. you know, and what our relationship is with family and, you know, personally and as the characters. And I feel like you can tell. I just, it's interesting. I think, you know, it all boils down to money. Like people want to get as much as they can <laughs> yeah. for as, you know, for yeah. as little as they can and they want to and everyone wants a piece of everyone and it's like oh well their schedule and their schedule and their schedule let's just this is the only time it works there's no room for rehearsal yeah um yeah i i, I miss rehearsal <laughs> and i it, really do you know it's 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 it almost feels like you know that they're thinking like if it if it's not if if we're not going to see it it's not worth paying for like you, you, you don't understand yeah. the benefit of it because you don't see it. Like that's one of the few things. Like, you know, if the script needs another draft, it's it, that's something that's seeable. Everything else, of course, is the sets, the the look of everything. That is, but but what really matters, what brings something from good to great, I think, is this kind of stuff that the actors are able to work with beforehand, especially when they're actors like you and and journey and all you know every you know i had her on too she's she's the same way i think where where it, it benefits i mean I'm, there might be some people that don't work that way but for people that do uh it just would make things better like this might be why uh i don't like a lot of things <laughs> <laughs> you know it's funny because thinking about it things i don't have rehearsals on I actually feel nervous throughout the whole shoot. Whoa. Like till day, the last day of filming, I am still That's shaking scary. before we take. Uh -huh. Yeah, uh. yeah, yeah. I definitely, I definitely, I definitely see that as a connection. I'm still shaking before each take. So, yeah. wait, so that means that, like, even just, even if you just spent a couple days with everybody including like the you know the director especially a lot of those nerves would go away i mean just just like kind of working things out maybe reading you know it doesn't have to be something like the capital r rehearsal that some some screen actors don't like it doesn't have to be that right it can just be something that just gets the nerves out before the set yeah or even just the conversation about like who these people are together in this room right, right. now. Um, yeah, what does, yeah, what does that kind of, what, what does that mean to each person in that room? Um, I do think that makes a huge difference. Like Journey felt like, she felt like my sister. She feels like my sister. Yeah. Um, still, because we had those big conversations and Shopper feels like a brother to me. Mm -hmm. He does. And so I definitely feel like we shared, we, sh we shared so much, you know, one thing I found, you know, kind of tough on We Own The City was I, I didn't get, I, I, I met most people just for like a day. Mm -hmm. But every time I was working, it was with someone new mm -hmm. and only really with Ian who plays Ahmed did I have that kind of continuity with? Mm. Um, but generally it was like 
one day, every day with someone new. So I guess I, you know, I always felt nervous. <laughs> I always felt nervous. Just going by what I'm seeing from your character in the trailer, uh, you must have been able to use kind of that nervousness, right? Because it's almost like that character is in a, in situations like trying to figure things out in a weird way and dealing with like, uh, you know, a, f a frustrating situation that is, you know, she's sizing up. Is is that right? I mean, yes and no. <laughs> I feel like she's very much like someone who, you know, you have, to, I think you do have to learn how to use your nerves, like um, for the benefit of the characters, because if they're there, you can't fight them. I feel like nerves are like water. If you fight it, you will drown. When, but if you just kind of go with it and, and, and lean into it, you might, you, you should be okay. <laughs> you should be. Um, I feel, feel like Nicole is just, there is the frustration, the, 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 the confusion of this whole situation that you can channel that, those nerves into, into that kind of fuel of trying to figure out why, how did this happen? how did this happen um but at the same time she's pretty cool mm. <laughs> so you know she's pretty she's level-headed and mm -hmm. and demands respect and yeah so the nerves have to be hidden i feel physically vocally they definitely have to be hidden <sighs> but they can be channeled into the frustration and the and the rest of it, you know, yeah, the, the yeah. character, um, the tumult in the character. Yeah. And you just mentioned vocally, like, is that something that actually helps you when you're doing a character that has to have an accent? And then what kind of uh, vocal work are you doing to kind of um, add to this characterization? You know, I find doing accents, I love doing accents, but I find my I find I never truly lose my nerves because I'm always so nervous about the accent I just don't yeah. want it to ever be wrong like right. when I hear a bad accent it takes me all the way out yep. and it just I'm so scared of it so I generally I generally um try and keep my accent on on set I found it quite difficult on We Own The City I think because I was meeting people like I said every new people every day I like to meet people as me and then, you know, yeah. and then, you know, can, I can, I don't mind keeping my accent on, but every day meeting someone in an American accent feels, I feel, just feel disingenuous. Mm. <laughs> I do. I mean, if I got to meet them and then I, you know, on Lovecraft, I had my accent on all day on set, mm -hmm. but they had met me before in the rehearsals and whatever. Right. But it just feels strange to me to meet someone and be like, where are you from? Oh, Manchester, England, <laughs> you know, in, Amer in an American accent. It feels, <laughs> feels yeah. wrong. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I, I do find I get a little nervous with the accent. Um, I worked with Jerome Butler, who's amazing. And I would go through, oh, he was he was my rehearsal. Like, we would go through the scene and figure out, mm. like, we would figure out everything together the night before. Like we basically rehearsed, you know, I was like, I feel like, the, I feel like maybe he means this. And I don't have the luxury of asking the actor mm. because we don't have the rehearsal yeah. um, until the day. So me and Jerome would kind of go through beat by beat, like what we thought was happening and in the scene and what the objectives for each of us were. And then, you know, sometimes that would be, be completely thrown out of the window when I met the other actor yeah. and they had a different take. Yeah. But generally, you know, the, the script is the script. So, um, yeah, Jerome ended up being my rehearsal, which, oh my gosh, I'm so grateful for. Yeah. I would, I, I worked with him every night before my, before I filmed and hearing the other lines for the first time, like on set whilst you're filming just feels, it just makes me very nervous. And so, and just knowing how and just having the opportunity to play and you know like much like on stage with mr burns maybe figuring out maybe i don't know does she think this person's cute does she like what this person's wearing mm -hmm. like figuring mm -hmm. out these little 
things that might just inform how you play something a little mm-hmm. bit. Just having that moment to just play before we have yes. to go. Yes. You know? Yes. And because of this, like because of 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 what you're talking about, what is the ideal characteristics of a director for you when you're worried about your accent, worried about the idea that you haven't met this actor yet, that you're doing the scene with and time's kind of tight. What do you need from that director and how do you want them to be working with you? What, what, what brings out the best in you? Trust. Do I trust them? Uh, do I trust them to, to tell me the truth? Um, do I trust them to push me, pull me back? Um, it's my job to do as the director tells me to do. Like I will bring what I bring, but if they say they want something else, I think it's my job to do what the director says. That's, I remember seeing that my first time signing my contract for a play, like I (laughs) Like, mm. I swear to do what the director tells me to do. <laughs> um, so for me, it's it's just do what I, I, you know, do I trust them artistically? Do I trust them? <laughs> and do I just trust them? Not even artistically, because it's not up to me to judge. It's not up to me. Yeah. You know, it's not, I'm not in charge of the whole project. So... I just I just do what I do what they think is best for the whole show. Yeah. Do you have anything that you do when you're not working to kind of keep your actor self fed? I see people. I see my friends and family. I connect with I connect with the people and the things that I love. I connect with their humanity their joy and pain and and you know i i try and yeah i mean i'm generally quite quiet on a day to day but i think connecting with people is so important for m- my job um uh, what else do I do? I read. I always audition for everything. I never, I never, I never turn down an audition. I never wow. think, I never say like, it should be offer only. Like, I just, I feel like it's, sh- you know, that's, that's part of the job. Like, you know, reading the scripts, playing with the character in my mind, um, reading, um, reading Oh, actually, I've kind of gotten into audiobooks recently. My, and I, um, that's been that's been a real like imagination like fizzer for me. Like hearing the actor reading it, but also imagining mm. the, the scene. Mm-hmm. I feel like that helps me with my prep. You know, kind mm-hmm. of how I prepare for a character. Um, but yeah, I, 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 I'll. I'll read everything. Yeah. Wumi Masaku, thank you so much. Thank you. This is fun. Back to One is a production of Filmmaker Magazine, which is a publication of The Gotham, formerly IFP. Listen to back episodes of this podcast at filmmakermagazine.com or wherever you get your podcasts.